အလင်ကပါနေရာအဲလက်ဆိုဒီထရိန်းနဲ့ဒပ်နဲ့တက်စ်အတောင်းပီးသွားတယ်ပေါ့เนาะဒီနေ့ဒီဘိုင်းအက
and 1% deficit error, then maybe your users are quite happy that you have a cat cost lab with only 1% error, then this will have you know, low bias and low variance. One subtlety that I'll just briefly mention, but we'll leave to a later video to discuss in detail, is that this analysis is predicated on the assumption that human level performance gets nearly 0% error, or more generally, that the optimal error, sometimes called Bayes error, for the, so the Bayesian optimal error, is nearly 0%. I don't want to go into detail on this in this particular video, but it turns out that if the optimal error or the Bayes error were much higher, say it were 15%, then if you look at this classifier, 15% um, is actually perfectly reasonable for a training set, and you wouldn't say there's high bias, and you also have pretty low variance. So the case of how to analyze bias and variance when no classifier can do very well, for example, if you have, um, really blurry images so that you know even a human or just no system could possibly do very well, then maybe Bayes error is much higher and then there's some details on how this analysis would change. But leaving aside this subtlety for now, the takeaway is that by looking at your training set error, you can get a sense of how well you're fitting at least the training data. And so that tells you if you have a bias problem. And then looking at how much higher your error goes when you go from the training set to the dev set, that should give you a sense of how bad is the variance problem. So are you doing a good job generalizing from the training set to the dev set? That gives you a sense of the variance. Um, all this is under the assumption that the Bayes error is quite small and that your train and your dev sets are drawn from the same distribution. If, if those assumptions are validated, uh, there's a more sophisticated analysis you could do, which we'll talk about in a later video. Now, on the previous slide, you saw what high bias, high variance looks like, and I guess you have a sense of what a good class by looks like. What does high bias and high variance looks like? It's kind of the worst of both worlds. So you remember we said that a classifier like this, a linear classifier, has high bias because it underfits the data. So this would be a classifier that is mostly linear and therefore underfits the data. I'm going to join this in purple. But if somehow your classifier does some weird things, then it's actually overfitting parts of the data as well. So the classifier that I drew in purple has both high bias and high variance. But it has high bias because by being a mostly linear classifier, it's just not fitting you know, this um, quadratic light shape that well. But by having too much flexibility in the middle, it somehow gets this example and this example um, overfits those two examples as well. So this classifier kind of has high bias because it was mostly linear, but you needed a, maybe a curved function, a quadratic function. And it has high variance because it had too much flexibility to fit you know, those two uh, mislabeled or those outlier examples in the middle as well. Um, in case this seems contrived, well, it is, this example is a little bit contrived in two dimensions, but with very high dimensional inputs, you actually do get things with high bias in high variance in some regions. And so it is possible to get classifiers like this in high dimensional inputs that seem less contrived. So to summarize, you've seen how by looking at your algorithm's error on the training set and your algorithm's error on the dev set, you can try to diagnose whether it has a problem of high bias or high variance or maybe both or maybe neither. And depending on whether your algorithm suffers from bias or variance, it turns out that there are different things you could try. So in the next video, I want to present to you a, um, what I call a basic recipe for machine learning that lets you more systematically try to improve your algorithm depending on whether it has high bias or high variance issues. So let's go on to the next video. Uh, I've noted. Uh, okay. Okay, well, I'm going to do the money. 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 I'm going
ဆွဲတမ်းနဲ့ဘေးရဲ့ဆွဲတမ်းကိုကိုကမှာစမင်ကောင်းလည်းမင်လာဖြစ်နိုင်တယ်ပေါ့နော်ဒါအမှုန်
ตอนซ้อมโหตอนซ้อมอุตส่าห์ซะกูไม่เอาเลยนะเทรนเนี่ยเดเวลอปเมนต์ซะหนูเลยพอเลยเอเบลิเดชั่นซะหนูเลยพ
ออชินะชินะอ๋อฮัลโหลอ่าจนเอาเมลุยาล่ะมั้ยดิเมลุยาเมลุยาบาเลยเมลุยาบาเลยเมลุยาเอ่อดีเอราเอราปาสนิสโ
ตัวมาตัวอภิเมษาตัวมาสีดีดาตีดาหมอเลยอ่ะทั่วเนี่ยอภิเมษาเนี่ยบลาวบลาวมาเนี่ยบลาวตรอเนี่ยมาเนี่
Good as a well, I'll pass and send it at the Damor and Macau Chinese. When I look at the different Ayan, yes, it is. Where are they going to do more? Do you have that? We do that draw me to your curious. I said, I was one minute to do it a mile of minutes. I say, I'm not going to draw a mile of the people that come with your way. I want to. You have the base. You have any better view of question in Ale, and I'm like, let's tell me, I'm not telling you, let's tell me about it. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. อ่าตัวนี้ตัวนี้ตัวนี้มันเนี่ยตัวนี้ฮานะตัวเนี่ยตัวดูเว้ยมันเนี่ยตัวนี้ฮานะเลยมันเนี่ยอะไรสุดท
ဟုတ်ပါဘာနောက်တစ်ရာလာတဲ့ဆရာမေးလိုက်ပါမယ်အကိုဝင်တင်းဟိုအကိုနည်းနည်းကိုစိတ်တွေမှာရှုပ်န
it turns out that this information that lets you much more systematically using what I call a basic recipe for machine learning, it lets you much more systematically go about improving your algorithm's performance. Let's take a look. When training a neural network, here's a basic recipe I will use. After having trained an initial model, I will first ask, does your algorithm have high bias? And so to try to evaluate if there's high bias, I, you, you should look at um, really the training set or the training data performance. Right? Um, and so if it does have high bias, so it's not even fitting the training set that well, some things you could try would be to try a bigger network, uh, such as more hit layers or more hidden units, or you could train it longer, you know, maybe run gradients at longer, or try some more advanced optimization algorithms, which we'll talk about later in this course. Or um, you can also try, this is kind of a, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but we'll see later that there are a lot of different neural network architectures, and maybe you can find a neural network architecture that's better suited for this problem. Putting this in parentheses, because all those things that, you know, just have to try it. Maybe you can make it work, maybe not. Whereas uh, getting a bigger network almost always helps and training longer, well, doesn't always help and it certainly never hurts. But so when training a learning algorithm, I would try these things until I can at least get rid of the bias problems. So I go back after I've tried this until, um, and keep doing that until I can fit, at least fit the training set pretty well. And usually if you have a big enough network, you, could, you should usually be able to fit training data well, uh, so long as it's a problem that is possible for someone to do, right? If an image is very blurry, it may be impossible to fit it, but if at least a human can do well on the task, if you think Bayes' error is not too high, then by training a bigger than where you should be able to hopefully do well at least on the training set, to at least fit or overfit the training set. Once you've reduced bias to a um, acceptable amounts, I would then ask, do you have a variance problem? And so to evaluate that, I would look at the depth set performance. Right? Are you able to generalize from a pretty good training set performance to having a pretty good depth set performance? And if you have high variance, well, best way to solve a high variance problem is to get more data. Uh, if you can get it, this you know, can only help, um, but, but sometimes you can't get more data. Or you could try regularization, which we'll talk about in the next video, to try to reduce overfitting. And then also, again, this is, uh, sometimes you just have to try it, um, but if you can find a more appropriate neural network architecture, sometimes that can reduce your variance problem as well, as well as reduce your, your bias problem. But how to do that, it is harder to be totally systematic how you do that. But so I try these things and kind of keep going back until hopefully um, you find something with both low bias and low variance whereupon you would be done. So a couple points to notice. First is that depending on whether you have high bias or high variance, the set of things you should try could be quite different. So I'll usually use the training depth set to try to diagnose if you have a bias or variance problem and then use that to select the appropriate subset of things to try. So for example, if you actually have a high bias problem, getting more training data is actually not going to help or at least it's not the most efficient thing to do. Right? So being clear on how much of a bias problem or variance problem or both can help you focus on selecting the most useful things to try. Second, in the earlier era of machine learning, there used to be a lot of discussion on what's called the bias-variance trade-off. And the reason for that was that for a lot of the things you could try, you could increase bias and reduce variance or reduce bias and increase variance. But back in the pre-deep learning era, we didn't have many tools. We didn't have as many tools that just reduce bias or that just reduce variance without hurting the other one. But in the modern deep learning big data era, um, so long as you can keep training a bigger network and so long as you can keep getting more data, which isn't always the case for either of these, but if that's the case, then getting a bigger network almost always just reduces your bias without necessarily hurting the variance, so long as uh, you regularize appropriately. Um, and getting more data pretty much always reduces your variance and, and doesn't hurt your bias much. So what's really happened is that with these two steps, the ability to train a bigger network or get more data, we now have tools to drive down bias and just drive down bias or drive down variance and just drive down variance without really hurting 
uh, the other thing that much. And I think this has been one of the big reasons that deep learning has been so useful for supervised learning, that there's much less of this trade-off where you have to carefully balance bias and variance, but sometimes uh, you just have more options for reducing bias and redu or reducing variance without necessarily increasing the other one. And in fact, um, so last you have a well-regularized network. We'll talk about regularization starting for the next video. Training a bigger network almost never hurts. Mm -hmm. And the main cost to training a neural network that's too big is just computational time, so long as you're regularizing. So I hope this gives you a sense of the basic structure of how to organize your machine learning problem to diagnose bias and variance and then try to select the right operation for you to make progress in the problem. One of the things I mentioned several times in the video is regularization. Uh, it's a very useful technique for reducing variance. There is a little bit of a bias variance trade-off when you use regularization. It might increase the bias a little bit, although often not too much if you have a huge enough network. Um, but let's dive into more details in the next video so we can better understand how to apply regularization to your neural network. อืมดีเนี่ยเอาเอลเอสกาโกโจดูโกโจดูเบ้อเอาโกตู้ห่าวเว้ยเอาชิงไข่มาเลยก็น้าเลยเลยเค้าเปลี่ยนเปลี่
ဒါကမဟုတ်တာပဲထားပါတော့ကိုယ်အမှန်ဆိုကိုယ်အဲ 70% ကိုယ်ဖမောင်းတော့တစ်ချက်ချက်တာအောင်ကင်ကမောတဲ့အရင်ပါယက်စ်များနေတာအာနောက်တစ်နည်းနဲ့ဘယ်လိုပြောလို
ตัวดีตัวไม่ซาบ่งานไอ้ที่ตู่ไปได้มั้ยตะเสร็จแล้วเอาไปงาเบลเดลุบงาทาได้มั้ยไอ้หลุญโยลุญลงลาบ่ล
ဟုတ်ကျွန်တော်ကျွန်တော်ရှင်းတယ်ကျွန်တော်ရှင်းတယ်ဆိုတာခုနတော်တော်ဒီဟိုက်ဘိုင်းရစ်ကတော့ထရ
ไอ้ตัวนี้ก็ชื่อมาพี่ก็จะรู้ไปสกิตายเนี่ยบอกว่าอะไรหมดมาซะกูยาโอเคโอเคโอเคไอ้เจ้าเจ้าเจ้าเ
ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไม่ไฮเวเรียนผิดเลยสรุปเช่นอันไอ้เนี่ยอัตราการตะคุติโหดีไกช่อชะหน่าอ่ะโหตั้วโลเวเรียนผ
ဟိုအဲ့လိုအဲ့လိုခဏတွေအဲ့လိုဟိုညမ်းမထိဒီနေရာဒီစစ်မိနစ်စလိုက်ကိုစစ်စစ်မိနစ်စလိုက်ပ
เอ่อแม่สันนี่ก็ชื่อนี่ทบบาเลยเฮาไปละคลีเลยโบชิงว่าเนาะเนาะมาเนาะอันทอยญามาเนาะสอรี่ญามาลูกขอกันน่ะไ